a lot of street photographers give up way too early, some before they even get started. There's a very important reason why this happens and it may surprise you, but once you have the solution, the path ahead becomes much easier. For years, I must have shot thousands of photos, and I mean thousands of photos, and I have next to nothing to show for it. For me, that might be thousands of photos in the bin, or for the Americans, in the trash. But after years of kind of not taking any photos that meant anything to me, luckily a couple of years ago, something inspired me again to pick up my camera and start shooting for me versus for any professional use. And I really wanted to put in the time and learn my way through the world that is street photography and find out what I can actually contribute. There's no question that the best way to start with street photography is quantity over quality. Rather than being precious with what you choose to shoot, just get started with shooting everything and anything. Putting in the shots, learning your camera, learning the rules of exposure, understanding the tools you use is most important when getting started. This approach of shooting everything is a large part of the process in order to get you to a place of being confident with the tools in your hands. But for street, after a while, there is something you're missing and you start to feel it and no one else will tell you. You might start asking yourself questions like, why do my photos look like everyone else's? Why do my photos feel like I could delete them and not care? Why don't my photos stand out? Why don't they get more likes? But more importantly, why don't they feel like me? Trying not to imitate people when creating new work can be very difficult because of a lot of what we see online like making YouTube videos for the last few years, you have to really remember not to play Peter McKinnon and go, what's up everyone, or something like that. It's weird, don't do it if you're English especially, it's odd. Being yourself is a challenge online, and especially with photography, try to really lean into what's you versus copying what's popular from someone else. Shooting everything can lead to becoming a generalist, but what does that even mean? Generalists are all-rounders, they're good at absolutely everything. Whatever you ask them to do, they can do, or at least they'll say they can do. I know this because I've done this for the last few years as a videographer and it has been detrimental to progress. You say yes to everything and sometimes in order to win jobs you're not winning them on skill but sometimes it's on lowering your prices. Generalists do well, they're busy, but at the end of the day they don't have much to show for it. Within street photography I feel like this is very very important to remember. You can shoot everything under the umbrella that is street photography, but when you shoot enough puddles, portraits, architecture, transport, protests, events. There's nothing wrong with pressing the shutter every time you see one of these things, but at the end of the day, until you narrow in, you're never gonna feel yourself create something a bit deeper. At first, when you're shooting everything and you're taking influence from and like taking in a lot of other people's work, it's good to do that kind of inhale. But there comes a time when you need to risk taking bad photos and experiment to be able to find something that is yours, even if it looks bad. Like, that's fine. If it looks bad and it's yours, that's better than having something that looks good and it's someone else's. Just ask the Mercedes F1 team. The flip of being a generalist is choosing to be a specialist. And what does this mean? For example, if you're a doctor, there's being a doctor, which is kind of like the generalist, or there's being a brain surgeon or a cardiologist, which are two examples of specialists. When you choose to specialize in something, you become more valuable, more unique, and you become increasingly more knowledgeable in a much narrower field. And the same goes for photographers, obviously not as responsible as doctors, but we can draw some comparisons. Say if you're a photographer, people might ask, what do you photograph? And you can say, I'm a street photographer. So you've specialized in one lane, but once you get into street photography, as you may know, that becomes an entire ocean of possible things that you could do. Street photography does not mean one thing. And I think I see a lot of people at the moment thinking street photography has a clear definition. I don't think it does. The more I learn about street photography, the more I think there's room for literally everything in here. So with this knowledge, what do we actually do? We then need to specialize even further. You don't need to commit to one focus forever, but really focusing in on one thing, like hyper-focus for a period of time, will pay back dividends. Whatever you want to shoot, pick something and just try specialize in this one thing. This level of specializing can do two things. One, it gives you something to say if people confront you about why you're taking photos, or if you want to go and explain to someone that you want to take their photo, you can give them a reason why. That sounds a lot better than someone seeing you take a photo and they go, 
what are you doing? And then you just say, oh, I don't know, I'm just taking a photo. Like, you know, it's much, much better to have a reason why you're doing something versus just being like, I'm taking photos for, for the fun of it. So yeah. And number two, this begins to put on like the blinders rather than looking at everything in your peripheral vision, thinking I could shoot this, I could shoot that, I could shoot this. Instead, you might shoot a few random things, like don't feel like you can't shoot anything you want, but you start to focus in on, I wanna collect more images of these people or this kind of event or this time of day or this part of town. You start to think a bit more purposefully about where and what you want to shoot. And it's funny, once you start collecting a few images like this, you'll see them pop up much more and you naturally notice them. Kind of like if you've ever played Grand Theft Auto, you find a rare car and suddenly that rare car is like everywhere on the map. It's that, it's the GTA rule of street photography, except don't steal a car, obviously. When you start to focus in on one subject or kind of subject or area specifically, you start to get a more rewarding feeling from every time you go out with your camera. Rather than going out and thinking, cool, I got a reflection shot, you might think, oh, I got another good image that kind of fills in this gap in the body of work I'm putting together. It can feel much more fulfilling with every single trip out. And once you've done this regularly, you start to feel like you've put together a nice little collection to share with other people. Allowing yourself to choose a narrower focus means you get to dig deeper into a specific subject versus sort of skimming the surface across like a wider base. But to be able to make good steps forward with this, you have to accept the limitations of not shooting everything under the sun and really narrowing your focus on a specific subject or a specific story. Something that you'll find when you start to narrow in on a focus like this is that rather than including variety of different subjects, different people, different places, different buildings, you focus in on one subject matter. And actually the creativity within that then becomes where your personality starts to show in your photography. Say the details you choose to include in your photos. It could be the emotions that you choose to show in your edits. Remembering that your editing process isn't the shadows and highlights so much as it is the photos you want to include in this final collection of images. Embracing your personality and choosing a narrow focus over time Hopefully, we start to see a visual identity that is uniquely ours appear in the work we produce. For me recently, I've began to focus in a little bit in my city of Manchester in a specific area on specific subjects. All my life, I've been a dog person. I've been taking photos of dogs since I was about four. I think I can show you the first ever dog photo I took. Out of focus on a picture frame I made at school. Amazing. And living in the city that I live in now, there are lots of people around who have dogs and they have quite a lot of quirky different breeds compared to where I grew up where everyone had like Labradors. And while at the moment I'm not in a stage of life where I can afford to and logistically look after a dog, whenever I bump into dogs on the street and I get to say hi to one, it brightens my day. Like dogs are like my kryptonite, I, I love them. So I'd taken a couple of random stills of some dogs previously before really making this a focus and the images I got back, I really liked them. I liked seeing the dogs themselves, their little micro personalities that you can pick up on, and also kind of what a breed and like groom factor of a dog says about the owner, and sometimes how the owner's appearance and the dog's appearance kind of complement each other and tell a story about each other. It started off as a very silly idea that I thought I had for what if I just shot dogs in this part of Manchester, and since I've started, only very, very, very briefly, like actually only started focusing on this in the last couple of weeks, but since I've started already, I feel like, oh, this is, this might be something I want to show to people, like in a silly way. And it's already meant that every time I'm going out now, as soon as I see people with dogs, if I don't have my camera, I'm like gutted. So I know I need to start taking my camera out pretty much every single time I leave the house and shooting as many dogs around this town as possible. Obviously, having only started this recently, I don't have much to show for it yet, but since I got the first scans back of black and white that I've been shooting with dogs, I can already start to feel a bit of my personality in this process compared to everything I've shot in the last year. And it has made me realize that, you know, paying attention to what you gravitate towards is important compared to seeing like popular things on socials at the moment, even things that aren't like the trends. Popular things you see on socials sometimes can feel like, oh, I should shoot more things like that. Like, you know, misty, burnt orange silhouettes and stuff. Totally fine. But at the end of the day, you need to really just pay attention to what you want to shoot and 
totally risk shooting some bad photos in order to shoot photos that actually look like you shot them. While it's good to focus in on what interests you personally, make sure what you're focusing in on actually interests you and it's not a trend that you're following like these. Trends are good, but not for too long.